Good morning, Connections. Glad you're here. We are going to wrap up our lessons on Jesus Jiu Jitsu today. In a moment, we're going to talk about bravery. But I wanted to take this time to emphasize that this is different than taking Jiu Jitsu lessons at some strip mall downtown. Jesus Jiu Jitsu is to be utilized each and every day just to help us navigate through this world and make the impact that God desires for us to make. I would not be surprised that before lunch today, you were tested in many of these skills. You will be given opportunities to employ these weapons each and every day. And that's the importance. These aren't something to just learn and put on the shelf or, or display your black belt and you know, have everybody go, oh, they know Jesus Jiu Jitsu. These are practical lessons that you need to learn and apply daily. I'm looking forward to this Sunday. I hope you can be there. It's gonna be a, a day of celebration. Till then, Enjoy bravery, and we'll open a new subject come Monday. So we've run through the entire list, and we come to the very last one, bravery. And bravery is perhaps one that you might not associate with Christianity. Aren't those the judgy ones? Aren't those the pacifists? Those turn the other cheek people? Bravery, courage. To choose to set aside the weapons that are common in the world and utilize this these skills that we've developed that Jesus is affording us will require us to be brave. When we navigate through this world, there's going to be temptation after temptation to take the route that everyone else takes. And we know that that is folly. Representing God well often goes against everything that we, in our own opinion, think we should do. We all still have that self-preservation wired into us. We are going to be in situations in the future where it feels more natural to grab for things from the world than to, to remain on track with God. We're going to want to be selfish. We're going to want to be able to, to shout down those who falsely accuse us. We want to dig up dirt and sling mud just like they're slinging at us. We're going to want to take vengeance. None of those tools are available to us if we are truly trying to develop as followers of Christ. It's going to require us to be brave when we are faced off against the unknown, when we are called to trust God There's very few other job descriptions 
that have perseverance and persecution listed. It's it's not natural, but it is what God has called us to. One of the best examples of this comes at the very end of the Gospel of John. When Peter is, in all of his confidence, talking about always having Jesus' back, that loyalty factor that we were talking about yesterday. I got you. I would never allow you to, to face anything alone. Loyalty is tested. And in Peter's case, loyalty is tested the night that Jesus is arrested. And out of fear, Peter denies Jesus three times. It's that self-preservation kicking in. I know the all the tools that Jesus has given us, but I'm backed into a corner and this instrument feels, feels like the right one in my hand. Peter learned something about himself that night. And he thought that he was a jujitsu master. And now he finds himself unsure of whether he's learned anything. So here in the very last portion of the Gospel of John is the restoration of Peter. Are you ready, Peter? Are you Loyal, do you love me? It gives Peter an opportunity to rediscover his confidence, and it's a foreshadowing of the bravery that will be required and that he will display. The third time, this is John 21, 17. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus had asked him a third time. Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. When we talk about this passage and the three times that Jesus asked the question, the three times that he requires Peter to respond, we recognize that Peter just kind of answers offhand, perhaps the first time. Love you, man. Jesus is going for more. Jesus wants it to click into place. What is going to be required for you to be successful going forward? You will no longer be able to reach for that weapon you used the night I was arrested. Our names are forever entwined. You are synonymous with me. Therefore, in 18, very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. This 
this message that Jesus is sharing with Peter is very intimate and specific to him. But it's also a message he's sharing with every follower that comes after. We've spoken many times now of not by my will, but by the will of our Father. To surrender our will and submit to someone else's requires a tremendous amount of bravery. To have faith that allows you to stand while others fold doesn't come easily. The description of why Jesus speaks this to Peter isn't any more comforting. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Our names are now synonymous, Peter, and you will go on and do great things. But as the chapter closes on your story, as the chapter is closing on my story here on earth, you will experience very similar things that I'm going to experience. To God be the glory. Be brave. And after making this statement after the big reveal that it's going to require a tremendous amount of bravery and perseverance and you're going to be persecuted Jesus next words are follow me you've just witnessed me be arrested falsely accused hung on a cross Follow me. Now you tell me whether it requires a tremendous amount of bravery to be a follower of Christ. It comes with the greatest rewards. It comes with, with understanding so much more than if we remain in our old life. But it's not going to be easy. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this calling on our lives. Thank you, Lord, for the teaching. Thank you, Lord, for equipping us for success. As we practice these skills that you have blessed us with, that you challenge us to relinquish the weapons that we once used, Help us to remain steady and strong. We do not desire to shame you, Lord. We do not desire to shame ourselves. As we face off against the enemy's schemes today, Lord, Let us always remain in you. Let our names be as synonymous with you as Peter's name is. For your glory and honor, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, wrapping up a great week. 
great topic. Go out and practice your jujitsu. It will bring great victory and the doors will open. See you on Sunday. Know that I love you and I miss you. Looking forward to seeing you. Till then, be good. <laughs>